folks and welcome back here to ace run productions as we bring you the conclusion of the myrtle beach open presented by innova out in myrtle beach south carolina we've already had two rounds go off so check out that coverage if you haven't already but we are in the final round i am dust murray and joining me for the commentary once again is nathan queen how are you doing sir doing well uh back out at the splinter city course today for the third and final round uh back to that park style of golf with uh, lots of chances to score, and we've got a pretty fun card to watch today. Indeed, a mix of youth and veterans on this card. Some we've seen already on the coverage for this tournament, and a couple of new faces, though, being added to it on our final lead card as we'll kick things off with Braden Sides. Shot the hot round of the day the first round and shot really well yesterday as well, representing Dismania, South Carolina native. Uh, only been playing NPO for a couple of years. We're already doing pretty well, winning Tennessee State Championships and Lake Marshall Open. Then we got Joseph Anderson, recently signed a two-year deal at Castaplast out of Athens, Georgia. Uh, had a good year on tour this year. Came second at Kansas City Wide Open, fifth at Mid-America Open, and was top 12 at USCGC. And Kayla Visco with tying the hot second round out at Sakisti yesterday with 10 under par along with three other players. And then Anthony Anselmo, a 2018 amateur world champion. And uh, only been a pro since 2020. So uh, new players on the rise as we again start here on hole 12 at Splinter City Disc Golf Course. 390 feet. Pretty straight shot, but you do have a little bit of room to drift it right or left to try to get that distance. About 15 feet behind the baskets, you have a little bit OB road that does creep up, but at 390, pretty difficult to reach. The fairway drivers were what we are likely to see. Taking the tee first one, DB Braden Sides. Again, he represents Dismania. He is a South Carolina native, 10-16 rated. Only been playing pro since about 2021, so still very young in his pro career, but has already done well for himself in 2023 with a couple of big wins. A little early catch, though, on that one. Yeah, possibly the first chance of nerves there from Braden. Yeah. Uh, he's had the lead throughout the event so far, and we haven't seen many tee shots like that. And Joseph Anderson was actually a Rookie of the Year candidate for the Disc Golf Pro Tour this year. Again, he came second at the Kansas City Wide Open, fifth at the Mid-America Open, 12th at USDGC, and also had a top 20 finish at the MVP Open, and it was a top 30 at Worlds. And uh, he has done a very good job on this hole to kick off the round. Yeah, gets it up there, pin height. Then, of course, it should be a stranger to no one here. Kayla Visca, a veteran in the game, representing Prodigy, Minnesota native, but does spend a lot of time in the Carolinas these days. Rated 10-33 with nearly 160 career wins. And playing this course blind the first day, going to have a little better knowledge of what he wants to do today, but leaves that one a bit low. And this is, again, Anthony Anselmo, a North Carolina native, representing Dynamic Disc. As you mentioned, he was a junior world champion in 2018. He also won this event in 2022, featuring the same courses in Splinter City and Sakisti. So definitely going to feel at home here. Yeah, also just a bit low off to the right. Uh, but going to have himself a long look. Braden, not really in too much trouble here, but lots of distance left. Going to want to put this one close to try to get up and down for par. Yeah, this is that Cosmic Fury he's been throwing quite a lot for these upshots, which is just a premium plastic logic, but unfortunately, that oh. has Blood Deep OB. Yeah, he does find that 15 feet or so behind the basket. I said it doesn't come into play too much. I was generally thinking about tee shots. Uh, he was a little bit off the tee there and is going to push along. Long putt attempt there from Kayla Visca. He will nestle net to the basket there for par. So we've got Anthony Anselmo, who's a lefty, but putts right-handed, which is a little bit of a rare combination. Yeah, it seems like most lefties have some type of odd way that they throw besides a lefty backhand. 
you see quite a few lefties with the lefty backhand, righty right. forehand for some Well, reason. I think what that is, and, and it's because I actually have a friend of mine who does that, is the right-handed baseball swing is very similar to a lefty backhand. Um, so a lot of people, I think, transition be- that way because of it, but are still naturally right-handed, and so will putt with their right hand. Here is that right-handed putt. Nice, easy par. And uh, Joseph Anderson sneaking in that birdie there. Absolutely going to put him within two strokes of Braden's size very early on in this final round as Braden has been, you know, holding a pretty solid lead, even at one point with six strokes ahead uh, in the second round. So it's getting tight now. Yeah, brings us into hole 13, 318 foot par three. You've got a right side gap. Most likely everyone will take um, pretty open, but you can't see exactly where you want to hit. You're going to have a headwind or most likely right to left crosswind to push your disc off to the left. So again, a little bit of OB back behind that basket. Definitely feels like one of the ones you want to snag here early on on this uh, front nine. As Joseph Anderson takes the box, puts a great move on this one. Yeah, that'll make it look pretty simple right there. Uh, backhand hyzer. Then, of course, Dr. Smooth himself, Kayla Visca, loves these mid-range type of shots. Oh, yeah. Pretty much the same line, just a little bit straighter. Uh, with a slightly straighter disc to get less skip. Beautiful shot from Kale. See that lefty forehand now from Anthony. Ooh. And jumping up to almost catch the cage on that one. Yeah, definitely scared the basket on that one, no doubt about it. After some first hole jitters to kick off the final round, trying to see some recovery here from Braden's sides, and puts it a little deeper than he wanted to again. Yeah, pod just a little bit early on that release. A little bit wider on that flight. It's going to leave him close. Still an opportunity for the birdie, and he is going to connect on that one. What a good hit. Way to collect himself and get that nice bounce back. Yeah, and it's also nice to hit a, a big confident putt early in the round. You know, when the pressure's on, trying to finish up the victory, get one in early like that's nice as Caleb Isco will also find birdie here early and our other two players quite close looking at four birdies here a lot earlier on in the round than we've seen before indeed as uh Joseph Anderson going two for two to kick things off here. Again, keeping himself on the heels of the leader, Braden Sides. Just a couple of strokes behind, and we'll be back to some more coverage after a short break. Missy taking the risk. Fourteen, four hundred and sixteen foot par three. Kind of an island shot. You do have to get across this road that you see here that also is on the left side and long right. You want to head out towards that tree you see to the right of the basket and then fade off to the left. Have yourself about a 30 or 40 foot skip. You get just over that ditch and that's going to be your best way to get your tap in birdie. Fairway driver, if you can get it there, uh, distance driver, possible to get some more skips, but probably fighting a bit of a headwind here. Looks like a good move from Joseph Anderson, though. Seemed like he got exactly the line that you'd want. And yeah, look at that. That is sparked to hit a turkey to kick off this final round. We're going to run that throw back, in fact. I mean, this was just pristine precision. Yeah, used that ditch well at the end also great distance control 
ends up hitting that ditch and his second tap in birdie in a row as you said gonna start his round with a turkey hey, he's really starting to put that pressure on Braden sides out in front you know forcing him to throw really good throws to maintain that lead as kale goes a little wide on that one yeah hung out wide but slow enough seems to be that he did throw a fairway driver able to avoid the ob long their lefty forehand here from Anselmo seemed a little overturned. Not quite enough height to get back to edge. Braden, kind of the opposite here, has plenty of height on this one. Going to need it to check up, and it does so nicely. He's going to be well inside the circle. Looking to get his round under par. Now. Yeah, it kind of used the height of that shot as his distance control mechanism to get well near the basket. And again, that's a great response from him after watching Joseph Anderson throw an absolute dime of a shot to be able to respond really well with his own. As Kale gets at a good bid. We'll have to settle for par, though. Yeah, I like Kale's chances at those long, floaty bids. He does well at keeping it close to the basket if he doesn't make it. Uh, but also gives it a good chance to make it as Braden is able to connect on that easy 12-footer. Yeah, a couple of par tap-ins for Kale and Anthony. And then, of course, Joseph Anderson will be last to act after being first off the tee. Just such a great shot. Not much left to do here. Those always feel good, just being able to walk up and drop it in. Gobble, gobble. Indeed. Celebrating Thanksgiving a little bit early here. It just was November 5th that this took place. Remember, remember the 5th of November? You know, all that jazz. Into hole 15, 411 foot par 3. Got a relatively small gap to hit with a low ceiling and it moves off to the right at the end making it difficult for that right-handed backhand to reach this pin really need about 420 430 feet of forehand power to reach this one uh, we've only really seen forehands from anthony so far we'll see if he's got that lefty backhand or not yeah, certainly shades up nicely for it if he does have it as joseph will be going for the forehand here and he has some smooth forehand power. It never really looks like he does all that much with it. But as you can see here, it's basket, it's, it's pin height. That's a incredible forehand. A little nature appreciation moment here. Yeah, you've got some crazy squirrels out here, down here in Myrtle Beach. They are very large. <laughs> and some funky colors as well. He's still skating around over there on the right hand side. Braden going with that backhand shot. Plenty of distance, but with that low ceiling, very difficult to get it over to the right. Is going to give himself a pretty scary circle two look. Kale trying to go roller here. Seems like a good angle. Yeah. Yeah, first round, uh, he played for the par, wasn't sure how to birdie it. Now that he's seen it before, uh, later on, a little higher stakes, is going to go for the birdie. Gets to circle two. And no, it does not look like the lefty backhand is there. Goes with the ever more difficult lefty forehand here. And he is just going to end up creeping out of bounds. Yeah, about four or five inches from the line there. So he will be throwing three. Likely bogey at best here. Definitely seems like a hole that would be very difficult to achieve with the lefty forehand. Yeah, and it's difficult, especially a younger golfer or early on in your career, to know to not go for it with your lefty forehand if that's what you're going to do. Just make sure you can secure your par. Yeah, it seemed like he was trying to throw a flippier disc to stay away from that left OB, but just didn't quite get it the way he needed to. So that'll knock him back a tad. Joseph Anderson to go four for four and just a bit high. Not going to lose strokes to the card, though, as that was the closest birdie chance that we had yeah. there. Also good to see a nice, confident stroke <clears throat> on a, you know, slightly elevated pin hitting top band. Definitely can tell that he's, you know, still 
got that confidence slowing after starting so hot. So it's going to be an interesting battle to see how this plays out between himself and Braden Sides throughout the rest of the round. Yeah, and Kale also has an opportunity to jump up there with a couple good birdies. Absolutely. They're still not out of it yet by any means for this lead card. Though Braden and Joseph had created a little bit of separation as we head into hole 16. Yeah, this would be one of those good birdies, a chance to make up some strokes, but you do have to have some good distance. 480 foot par three. Uh, some room to flex it to the left of this pine tree. You see, uh, get it moved, moving right, and then fade back out. It gets a little thick if you're too far right or too far left, uh, but lots of room to work with here. Just uh, distance is key. And certainly it seems like Joseph Anderson and Braden Sides do have the distance to attack this hole based on previous play that we've seen. And that is a great looking line from Joseph. Just outside the circle. Oh yeah. Very smooth backhand. Almost gets the full drift. But just outside the circle. Very good play on this one. Braden, a lot more aggressive looking swing and just not quite enough height to get it all the way back, but he's also going to be inside circle too. Definitely could see he had the power to get there, but like you said, the angle was just, just so ever off. You know, not by much though. Kale, more of an angle guy than a distance guy. Puts one out there nicely. Attempted flex forehand here from Anthony Anselmo. Just didn't quite get as much turn as he probably wanted out of that, but no harm, no foul. Yeah, still pretty good distance for a forehand. Yeah, there's not too many lefty forehands out there that are pushing the 480 you would need on this hole. You know, Chris Clemens comes to mind, and that's that. it about ends there. There's like maybe one other. No. Who's it? Well, I don't know the one other. You put me on the spot. I can't think of the name. <laughs> Devin Owens has a very solid lefty forehand, but I'm not sure it goes as far as Chris, as Chris Clemens. Is it Turner? But what a putt here from Braden Sides. Absolutely. Showing, yeah, he's controlled those nerves we saw on the first tee. And able to bounce back nicely. Great birdie here on 16. Uh... I think Turner does have a solid forehand. I'm not sure how he's quite got the distance Clemens does. Yeah, that's just the only other I could think of on top of my head on tour that would have it. As uh, Again, that was a massive birdie from Braden Sides to, you know, kind of keep himself out in front of Anderson, who's been hunting him down these few first holes. So get him a stroke back. Yeah, he gets one, gets one of those two strokes that he lost. Yeah. And so as it stands, Braden sides three strokes out in front. Kale just behind Anderson by three as well. We'll pick it back up after a short break. Third year of the Throat Pete Women's Disc Golf Championship. We are hosting women from all over the world. This week isn't just about the uh, top women in our game. We have opportunities for spectators and fans and women who are wanting to learn the game to come out and be a part of the experience. Um, we're doing our clinic Saturday and the touring pros, when they finish their round, will come over and they'll teach you how to play disc golf. So you can come out, you can watch them, you can learn, you could just be a part of this um, experience that's all about women's disc golf. Into hole 17, a bit on the shorter side, especially after the last few holes that we have played. 258 feet with a smaller gap to hit also than we've seen on the last few holes. Get through this uh, this gap that you're kind of in the middle of the screen right now and then drift just slightly to the left. A few trees to deal with at the end that can make your putt slightly obstructed, but relatively straightforward wooded hole here yeah a little bit more reminiscent of some of the other carolina golf out there on a hole like this one nice technical hole 
Little putter shot here from Braden Sides. Just a little bit left. Yeah, made it through that intended gap just a little bit on the stable side. Looks like Joseph Anderson, a similar shot, but lower. Uh, so going to control that left movement a little better. Should be inside 20 feet. And this is the type of shot that Kale loves to throw. And that's exactly why. Very good executing these tighter lines. A great looking shot from Anthony here as well. Gonna stop himself inside the bullseye. So Braden scooted just outside the circle. That's gonna be our longest look here. See if he can do it again after hitting a long one on the last. And there it is. He is heating up on the putting green, folks. Four birdies through six holes. Yeah, nerves handled. Oh, no. And he has handed him over to Joseph Anderson, who's now caught the band on a couple holes already. Yep. <clears throat> and so now the two stroke lead has grown to four here through our first six holes yeah that hot start has dwindled away uh, back to where we started now both Braden and Joseph three under par hole 18 537 foot par four I'm going to move straight towards that triple tree or cluster that you can see directly in front here. And then if you go to the left of it, you're going to have a pretty good line down to the right towards the pin. If you go to the right of it, you have a bit more trees to work through, but still reasonable to get to the basket. Once you do get up to the green, again, you have a few trees in the way that could cause you a circle's edge putt or so rather than a tap in on oh, yanked right there from Braden sides and that's kicked left and that could be in some deep trouble indeed it could if he got pretty far in there that's pretty much a pitch out we'll see what he ends up with Kale getting a little aggressive down the right side and gets a kick back left Kind of going to be looking at a scatter plot. Could have a great line, could not have much. Similar spot there for Anthony. And a great play here from Joseph, just kind of going down that left side, trying to avoid that row of trees there and handle it on the second shot i believe he's gonna have a pretty straightforward look to the this basket. is a pretty great break for brayton sides nathan i mean i thought he might have been really in the rough but he's actually found himself here right on the edge yeah i agree with you on that one and again though two shots in a row he's pulled it off to the right pretty quickly Still going to be on the edge and have an opportunity to get up and down for par, getting some fortunate kicks there. Great shot there from Kale. Put him on the putting green. As I thought he was, it looked like there was like a little bullseye in the distance, but it looks like it's like a little sunflower thing or something. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember exactly what that is. It looks is. like a nice target to try to aim for on your second shot, honestly, <laughs> then have your disc break off it. As Anthony also able to get there on the putting green. So Braden needs this shot to get up and down for par. And is able to navigate that first part of the gap. Gets a nice little checkup late, too. Should be 20, 25 feet. Yeah, he's definitely kind of turned his fortunes around on this hole. That's for sure. Could have been much worse than what he's going to wind up with. That's Joseph Anderson. Will we've seen get right this behind him there. Yeah, we've seen that green berg from Joseph quite a few times already. Looks to have that disc dialed in pretty well. Mm. 
Anthony going to be a little bit wide right there on the putt. So Kale, chance for birdie though, and he'll collect. Trying to inch his way closer to the argument for a fight for the lead. Yeah, very clean. Joseph Anderson having to straddle out pretty wide here. Able to connect for his birdie. Yep, and that will gain him at least one more back on Braden's sides. And that'll be it, though, as Braden will indeed par save this hole. Very impressive considering where his <laughs> tee shot was. Yeah, and I'm sure he feels fortunate to get that par also. Scores here. Braden at 24 under par, still three strokes out in front. Kale still in the mix for the podium for sure, as well as we head to hold number one. Yeah, 321 foot par three. Again, that right handed backhand hyzer is going to be your best route. There's three trees late that can kind of come into play. They're over on the right side of your screen right now. It's been cleaned up a bit. There used to be quite a bit of foliage and vines in between that kept you from skipping through them. So a lot of players tried to go around, which could push you long. Uh, but now it's possible to skip right on through. So kind of throw towards those trees and hopefully you get a nice skip to the basket. This is too straight. Get some decent ground action, at least get closer to the green. But as you said, it was just so straight out of the hand that it Really kept it wide of the green. This looks better. Yeah, this looks like a pretty good line to go around those trees. Is going to get that pretty good skip, but does push a little long. Oh, it's still going to be inside circle one. This is looking more inside those trees. And going to end up tagging one along the way, but still uh, inside circle one. Yeah. Going to be a putt off between those players there. It's the lefty forehand again out from Anthony and hits it nicely. He's going to park this thing. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to watch that one again. Yeah, that's the, that's the way you want to draw it up. We'll run back that lefty forehand, not something you get to watch too often. Great nose angle on that and speed control to get just around those trees. Have it hides her back underneath the basket. Yeah, just a surgical strike there from the lefty to give himself a drop in birdie. Everyone else going to have to work for those a little bit here on the putting green. Kale just high and wide out the hand right away. Yeah, it actually ended up a lot closer to going in than I thought it looked like on the release. <laughs> As Joseph Anderson give that chain a hug, got that last chain to grab it on in. He's going to card himself a birdie. Now five down through eight holes. Now you're kind of shaking your head because you, you kind of know you got away with one there. But, hey, scorecard don't care. As we are going to see a birdie in response, though, from Braden's side to maintain that three-stroke lead. So you only have one more hole left to go here on this front nine. So definitely good to be keeping that separation Going to the final nine holes. Kale cleaning up his par before Anthony Anselmo going to tap in a very nice lefty forehand birdie. Indeed, very well done as, uh, again, very close around that podium mark. Though Braden Sides maintains that three-stroke lead with one hole left to go in the front nine. We'll catch it after a short break. Quit being stuck in the past. Check out the new and improved website at infinitediscs.com. Here we are at hole two. 534 foot par four. 260 to 290 feet off of the tee. Dog leg right at that point. And then throw it about another 260 to 290 feet to the basket. 
you do have some OB long, maybe about 35 or 40 feet. But mainly just placement off of your tee shot is going to be the, the biggest point to try to get yourself a birdie here. Yeah, this is putter out of the hand for Joseph Anderson. Looks like it's the Rico from Castaplast. Did that get far enough? I think he is just far enough. That tr that big pine you see on the corner is kind of the mark that you have to get to. Well, that certainly did for Braden Sides. Yeah, going to be in a great spot to throw that same disc if he'd like to. Hopefully this is a slow disc that seems like it came out fast, and yes it is. It drops down nicely center fairway. It's like a soft plastic as well, so it didn't get much ground action. Looked a little early from Kale, but still winds up in a decent spot. Yeah, that's a little on the short side, but being on the left part of that fairway is still going to open up where he should have some type of angle. Yeah, skates one up there near the edge of the circle. I'm not... I don't even feel like I'm watching a lefty. Is it because he hasn't thrown a single lefty backhand? Yeah. Okay. He's like the antithesis of you. <laughs> yeah, quite the opposite. I should I should get up. Yeah, y maybe y'all can trade some Brilliant. secrets we and could. make a complete player out of both of you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we can figure a few things yeah. out as he does throw a nice forehand up to the green along with Joseph Anderson. I there. mean, you did manage to win yourself a DGPT championship, so I mean, I think you're fine. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Braden with a nice shot there as well. Looks like we're going to have four birdie opportunities here. Does seem that way. I think Kale with the toughest look. Yeah, having to get to a knee and throw a slight Anheuser putt it looks like here, but eh, no problem. hey oh. Kale keeping his name in the mix right now. You know, yeah, he might be a, a decent amount of chokes off of Brain, but he's right next to Joseph Anderson, and there's still a lot of holes to play. Yeah, and if you're making putts like that, it just starts to seem a little easier at that point. Is Anthony able to connect for the birdie along with Joey Buckets? Is it because of the bucket hat or because he makes buckets? Or is it both? I believe it's technically because of the bucket okay. hat, but he does he does make quite a few buckets here on the disc golf course. Works. Works either way you want to look at it then as we take a final look at the scores for our front nine here, the final round. As it is going to be Braden Sides maintaining a three-stroke lead heading into the final nine of the tournament. You do have Evan Scott and Andrew Marweed, though, kind of on the chase card, keeping themselves in the mix as well. Of course, Kayla's still within striking distance at 20 under par, so that's the way things are looking as we head into our final nine holes. Again, folks, we definitely appreciate you all tuning into the coverage here at Ace Run Productions. If you're not already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the bell for notifications to catch more coverage. You can also follow them over on Instagram and Twitter for updates. Also, if you'd like to follow us commentators, I'm Dustin Murray. You can catch me on twitter and instagram at follow dust and dustin disc golf on youtube nathan queen where can folks find you you can find me on facebook and instagram in queen underscore six eight two eight six make sure you check out those star color glow rates that innova champion discs has set up for me there you go well thanks again for tuning in folks and we'll see you one last time on the final nine see you there